Today, we're going to have a theme about looking after our feet. Now, many of you who, whom I know personally who come to the studio have your own set of hedgehogs at home because we work a lot on the feet here in the studio. Now, if you don't have a pair of hedgehogs, you can use a tennis ball or any firm type of ball. You can get a roll of plastic. Go for your life. Could you do it with a, a round rock? Possibly, but it won't give as much. But just think creatively what you can do to stimulate the proprioceptors of your feet. Now, I've asked Stanley to come into the studio today because he has kindly agreed to take his skin, muscles, bones, life out of the picture so that I can show you exactly where we want to go. So, as I said, working with the feet that are very complex parts of our body. And we're going to work on two parts of the feet. One will be the forefront, which is just beneath where your toes are. Your toes are called phalanges. Then you have the long bones of your feet called your metatarsals. Then a bunch of smaller bones, including cuneiforms and other names. Where we get to the heel, your calcaneus. So I'm going to break the foot into two parts, ball of your foot, heel of your foot. We're going to take the dome of whatever you're working with, the hedgehogs or something else, and we're going to work all points of the heel, and this is going to be nine points. There are nine points. A middle, a medium, and a lateral side. The same on the ball of your foot. So that's so you know visually when I talk about ball and heel. When I talk about the nine parts, we're not going to do all nine today, we're just going to do a section of them. But think of the ball of your foot here as having nine points, like a knots and crosses board. So it has a inside bit, a middle bit, an outside bit at the top, and then it has a middle bit that has a medial, middle, lateral, then it has a back bit which is medial, middle, back. So we have front, medial, middle, back, middle, medial, middle, back, back, medial, middle, back. Eight points. Confused you enough already? So without further ado, let's actually wake up those points. It's going to be something that you will want to put into your practice each day. So before we start, I'd actually like you to close your eyes and do what I call a somatic check-in. Go inside your body, focus down onto the feet. How are they making contact with the floor? Which bits feel a bit more connected to the floor? Are you weighted more over one hip than the other? Or maybe you're not so aware of them at all, but we're going to use this as a baseline to come back to. If you need to use a bar, this is, this is what a bar is. It is something that you can use to hold your balance, or if you've got a wall nearby, you can do that. Or if your balance is great because you've already done Sue's balance class today, your balance will be A1 okay. But starting with the balls of our feet, we're going to what I do is cat paddle over there. So we're not getting into the technical bit yet, you're just going to mold your foot around and walk forward over the domes until you get to the heels and do a little bit of a, uh, a stretching, just like a cat does, and then you start to walk and retrace that pathway to the middle of your feet. You'll find some of those bits, especially the middle arch, a little tense, because that's where the fascia of your foot, your plantar fascia, can be really taut. Some people even get micro tears in them, get something called plantar fasciitis. And if you've ever had it, you know you don't want to get it again, because it hurts. Then we're paddling all the way back and we're going to put our weight onto the right foot and have the outside of our foot. We're going to paddle the outside. I'm going to hang on to Stanley here to check that he's in balance. Actually, it's to check that I'm in balance as I talk. So we're going to roll the heel. It's like kneading bread. Just to wake it up. We're not doing anything specific here, just rolling on the outside. So the bones, we're stimulating the bones in the feet, in, um, encouraging a bit more blood flow to the surface of the bone structure. And now we go to the middle part of the outside of the foot, which can be rather challenging. 
That is this last metatarsal, your fifth one. And see how it has a protruding knob here? That's the bit that can hurt a lot more because there's a lot of um, tendon and ligament insertions there and they uh, facilitate that roll on the outside of the foot to come up to the ball of your foot when you take a normal cycle of your walking. So it can get stuck and you need to pursue this, pursue this pain for the betterment of your feet and the betterment of the rest of your body. We won't linger there too much, but as we do more of these in our next sequence, I'm going to get tougher on you, but today is just a little intro. Now we're onto the outside of the feet, the, the outside of the little toe, so just on that little bone, and just knead down onto that, push down onto it. You can see some of you are just doing it half-hearted, put your phones down if you've still got them, and stand up and knead the outside of that toe. Off your bottoms, up we get, and then paddling back to stand on that foot and just rest on the edge of your dome. And we're going to go to the right foot now, and you'll have the heel there. So you're rocking and rolling through that that foot on the outside. And we don't often do this medial rotation of the foot, but we do need to be more flexible in a functional way around those ligaments of the ankle. Now we go to the middle bit where that fifth metatarsal does its little rotation and nobbling. And then if you're brave enough, you can hold down a little bit more, put a bit of pressure to there. Those of you that have come into class and done this with me, you know I'm being quite lenient today because this work is not for the faint-hearted. Now we're moving up to the outside of the little pinky toe might feel a little sharp there, so just be gentle with it, but allow your whole weight to go down on it. And one more press, and then onto the ball of your foot, and coming back. We're going to have our heels on the floor. These guys love sticking to the floor, which is good, because they won't slip away. And I'm going to curl uh, the balls of my toes over and the first point of contact is just at the base of my big toes and bend my knees down and you can feel the first knuckle just behind your big toe we're going to press that down into the domes placing your hands on your hips just to check that you're keeping those two hip bones forward like a couple of headlights and we take our our weight over to the left, push down, and come up straight, lifting up tall through the spine, bend both knees, and come over closer to your mate, whoever might be there, trying to bend down both knees. And if you're quite tight in the anterior compartment here, it's going to be challenging to get down, or it could be your calves are tight, one or the other, and then up. Now bend both knees, and we're going to do a little Pilates exercise. Uh, some of you may know it as just knee opening or knee side, but you're going to externally rotate that left leg out to the side, keeping pressure down onto the medial front part of your foot. Exhale, bring it back to the center, stand up tall. Bend down, externally rotate the right leg out to the side. Doesn't move much, but you can feel all the muscles around your hip working and then exhale back to the centre and standing up. Now we're going to go to the outside of the front part of your foot. You might need to move your domes a bit further away from each other because your feet will come towards each other. So it's spreading out the ball of your foot. We're actually kneading out the fascia that's underneath to give it some uh, expressivity so that it can actually glide over the muscles, between the muscles. So we're going to bend to keep your knees facing forward, a nice deep crease at the hips, engaging a little bit through here to support you so you don't collapse down onto the femoral heads. And then externally rotate the left leg, just very small, and inhale back to center. Exhale, opening out, it can hurt a bit, and you'll find that your heel wants to twist a little bit. Think of lengthening your foot forward and back to the centre. 
Now we're going to stand up and go to the middle, middle point. So the middle of the ball of your foot and the middle of the other. So it's, remember I said there's a front, a middle and a back. And then there's a closest to your midline, middle and out. Well, we are middle, middle. Down and over to the left. Push down, 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 down. Externally rotate and back to the center position of the leg and stand tall. But you push down through the domes to stand tall. Bend over to the right. Externally rotate, try not to twist that ankle or the heel, back to the center and push down to come up. You feel the legs through the inner thighs, muscles there and into your glutes. Now you're going to step a little more forward and we're going to go to the back middle part and the back of your heel, back of your ball middle part. So if you've got it, you probably do need to get on a wall here or you, a hand somewhere. But if you've got the balance where you are, stay there, it's great. And we bend and over to the left, externally rotate, keep your toes lengthening forward and back to the center. Keep your heel lengthening back away from you, stand tall and bend. Over to your right, externally rotate, use these muscles here to bring you back into parallel and stand tall. Now we're going to step off the dome, so we just did a little snippet of nine points. And close your eyes and see if you can sense any difference in the sensations of how your foot on the left and the right is having a relationship with the floor. You might feel a little bit more grounded, you might feel that there's more um, what we call cellular stimulation, so you're feeling the uh, vibrations of the cells or the blood flow. Either way, it should feel better than it did before, a little bit more life through your legs. So let's go in and do a few random spots on the heel. So the first place we're going to do is the front middle part of the heel. The front middle part of the heel. And have a little look down at your toes and see if you can spread them out. Even go down and give them a pull of encouragement to lengthen forward. Because that's another uh, presentation we'll be making is how to actually take the stress and tension out of your toes. Because as we get old, we will see a little bit more contraction through the toes. And you've probably heard a term called hammer toes, where your toes curl up like this or they might go out to the side and you get bunions. We can do something about that. Let's get started. Heels pressing. So the front middle part of your heels. Exhale as you go to the side. Inhale, open. It's a little easier to open the leg in this position. And then exhale, come back to parallel. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, bend. Inhale, open out the right side. Exhale, bring it back and push it down to come up. Now we're going to go to the medial front part of the heel. Stanley, you're cramping my style, my love. Move. And bend over to the left as you externally rotate. Bring it back to center. Push down to come up. And bend medial front part over to the right. Open that right leg. Feel those glutes working and push down to come up. Now we're going to go to the middle outside of the foot. So middle of your heel but on the outside, middle part of your heel but on the outside. Spread those toes forward. Think of your knees having a very intimate relationship with your hips to so draw in your inner thighs. Bend down, press your toes and spread them over to the left. Externally rotate and back to the center, push down to come up. And inhale and exhale, and inhale and exhale. Oh, we're getting the hang of this. Now we're gonna go middle, middle heel. And we're gonna bounce down here a bit, because this is 
actually a good place to experience your centre of gravity. Because if your ribs are slightly forward and your weight's down through the middle middle, you'll be able to feel quite secure, like you can do all sorts of things here, because your weight is coming directly in a vertical line down from up to down. And a deeper bend over to your left. Externally rotate, press that big toe into the floor, back to parallel, and then push down to come up. Bend, inhale, over and exhale. Inhale, exhale, push down to come up. Really push down through the dome to come up a bit taller. And now we're going to the back part of the heel, but the middle, middle back, middle back. So you'll feel a little bit like you're rolling in. We want that weight on the medial back part of our heels. So if it does feel a little knock knee, it just means you're going to work these muscles a little harder and stabilize through the lateral pelvic stabilizers your glutes. And over we go to the left, rotate outwards, lengthen the thigh away from you, bring it back in and push down to come up and down. Over, externally rotate and back to the centre, push in that medial part and push down to come up. And move to the middle back part, middle back part. And we're going to do something slightly different. Two steps here. First is what we know. So bend over to the left and externally rotate. Lengthen the knee so you don't put any pressure into the knee joint. And come back. Push down with both feet to come up. And inhale over to the right. Rotate it out. Push down through that heel. And down to come up. Now we're going to lift the toes. Here's the challenge. Wall, where are you? Where art thou, my wall? Because you might be needed. Because I want you, thank you Stanley, to <laughs> lift up and drop. Lift up and drop. Keep your toes up. Pull up in here. Lift the inner thighs. Zip it up and up and up. <sighs> and then you're going to hinge back and bend and lift, 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 get the weight back. You'll start to feel that you're going up, up, up. So you're stimulating that back part of the heels. Up, up. And if you want to do it once a little at a time if your balance isn't quite there yet, get onto the back middle part of your heel and push, 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 drop. Then lift the other side up and push, 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 lift the other. Push, 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 down. Let's see if we can do a few of those. The deeper hinge and up, 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 down. Hold it and step off. Close your eyes. Now feel the feet. They're like beautiful jelly. A bit more awareness of your heels. Who would have thought you need to be aware of your heels? So while you're engaging in that pleasure moment, I'm going to move my drones over closer to a support structure, so near your wall, a chair, or a bar. This bar is actually used for a method that we offer here at the studio and in our training program called uh, Pilates Bar for Functional Movement. I think our Prime Minister might be coming to class learning what the bar is. So we're up here, tiptoes. Spread your toes over the domes. Like you are the only clothing that the domes have. So you've got to spread the toes out. And you're in fact pressing the fat pads of the ball of your feet back because we get too shortened in that area. And I know all of you, I don't know what the magic age is, but maybe over 40, whatever. But as you get older, you find that your feet get a little bit broader. It's because the fat pads underneath, all that cushioning and the soft tissue gets splayed out to the side. So this is pushing it back in. There are other ways uh, to do this, in many ways, and this is just one that has a little bit of pleasure associated with it as well. So draw up, trying to lengthen all the way up to the crown of your head, 
and you're pushing all that soft tissue back into the place where it needs to be and you're lengthening your big toe, second toe, third, fourth and fifth, drawing up and seeing if your glutes, your adductors can work to bring you into balance. Oh, I sense that balance. It feels beautiful, doesn't it? Okay, hold it there, breathing. Put your hand back onto your balance point. Bend your knees, lengthen your heels back, and then you'll get the weight down through the middle ball of your foot, the back ball of your foot, until your heels can get on, lift the toes, and roll forward again, and come up, and bend down, lengthen the heels back, back ball of your foot goes back, straighten the legs, toes come up, and then come up to standing and step away from your domes, holding your weight as beautifully tall as you can, and feel the sensation between your underneath your feet and the relationship between the floor and the feet. And do you find that you're standing a little more tall, less sinking down in your hips, you're actually lifting up? you actually can breathe a bit more. You can actually feel your lungs a little taking more air, your shoulders broad. Just stand there for another couple of counts to enjoy what you've done for your body, just by spending a little bit of time on your feet. Thank you and I hope you've enjoyed.